World Series champion, Nationals first baseman, it is Ryan Zimmerman. Yeah. Congratulations, buddy. How's that sound? How's that sound? <laughs> oh man, what a ride! Unbelievable. Um, yeah, we, you know, a bunch of us just kept talking about like it's just something that you can never take away. Now, you know, this team forever will, will always be remembered. You know, 10, 20 years from now, we'll, we'll always have this. So it was a uh, what a magical run, man. Just so much fun and, and just a great group of guys. Well, you, you you have to be exhausted. Admit it. Because, look, I'm exhausted. And just watching the games, just watching you guys yeah. on this ridiculous run over the last month. He doesn't month. wake up at 4.30 like yeah, we do after still, those games. I mean, it's physically and mentally <laughs> taxing. Yeah, he stays up through. until what, – what time are you going to sleep after those games on average? Like yeah. 2 a.m.? I mean, it's, those games are so long. And uh, when you're in it, you know, you don't really – you, you just kind of ride the wave. And I think, right. uh, you know, the day of game seven, we all kind of came to the field and we were like, this is it, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. This, 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 I remember I was in the, the batting cage before the game and I do a, you know, a hitting routine and a defensive routine every, every game. And I looked at Ali, the guy that does it with me every day. And I said, listen, I said, this is going to sound weird, but I'm so effing happy that I don't have to do this tomorrow. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, because, I mean, it's an extra month of baseball. Obviously, I'll worth it. And yep. I wouldn't change, change it for a thing. But, uh, yeah, man, you games out as well. It's uh, every pitch is you're mentally mentally in it. And uh, what, a, what a great experience. And especially for sort of the nature of the ride, it's well, been well documented, all the elimination games, all of the comebacks. I mean, you guys are just the most resilient team I've ever seen in my lifetime, Ryan, and I'm a lot older than you. But here's my question for you. So I don't know if you know, but the, the, ca the cameras captured you at the very end, uh, and you were like, oh, my God, holy S, and you jump in the air, <laughs> and that picture is going to be iconic, right, on Sports Illustrated now. Um as you're going through that, all these comebacks, even still, until that last out, you can't believe it, right? Yeah, I mean, and you almost, you know, athletes were so, I don't want to say superstitious, but, you know, you, you always say it's not over till it's over, so you're grinding out, you know, Huddy, I'm like, get the leadoff guy, Huddy, just get the leadoff guy out in this inning, come on, just get the leadoff guy out, he does that, and then, and then punches Altuve out on three pitches, and then, you know, with two outs, you're like, man, we're all like, this is going to happen. Like, <laughs> right. You know, right. You know, you're, you're sitting there and, and then, you know, the strikeout and it's uh, just a sense of, I mean, joy, relief. Uh, you know, I don't even remember saying that, what you guys just told me, honestly. Um, yeah. You said you know, it, bro. And then, <laughs> Lips you know, don't all, lie. All, all, <laughs> and then all postseason, uh, you know, me and Tony, like we, we did that all year, but you know, I told him before the game, I said, I just, I just want to run over there and hug you like a middle school kid one more time. Just right. one more time. Right. And uh, just so much fun, man. I think uh, it's starting to sort of sink in a little bit now. Um, we finally got home. You know, you're obviously up late after that game and got home today and took mm. the girls to school and right. kind of got on a regular thing and hopefully getting a little bit of rest because these uh, – these next two days, as you guys like to say, could get a little silly. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. get after it. Did you get Did you get emotional? Have you yet? A, a couple times. Um, I thought I would more on some of the interviews afterwards, but you're still so caught up in the moment. Um, my dad was there, so that was pretty cool. Uh, I've never really seen him get emotional. I think watching him be able to be there and come give me a hug afterwards. And, you know, because my mom and dad, I mean, everyone's family and parents, my brother, everyone's so, you know, you don't get here without the help of, of tons of people. So for Heather and my dad were able to be there and just to kind of see the the joy on their faces, I think made me, made me so happy. So it's, uh, it's just a cool thing, man. It's, it's cool for everybody. It's cool for, obviously for us, but for people who have supported the team for so long, for, uh, just for everybody, for the city, for, uh, I mean, the people that live on my street have been putting signs up and having watch parties at their house. It's just, you know, it really shows the, the sense of community and how cool of a city D.C. is. No, it was awesome. As we're talking to Ryan Zimmerman, first baseman, and eventually want to ask you by the way, because she had some conspiratorial <laughs> tweets, but I wanted to kind of go through some of the steps. 
So the wild card game. Uh, you had a huge hit in the rally. You guys faced Josh Hader there. I kind of want to go through that with you because you were on deck several times, and then they used you perfectly, and you came up with that big hit. Talk about your approach there, what 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 you guys were thinking when you faced Hader at the time, because um, that was a war right there. You could have been eliminated right there on October 1st. Right. Yeah, and then, uh, it's amazing. That game feels like it was like in June. Right, yeah. How, how, how long ago it was, but um, – uh, Davey kind of said before the game, he's like, listen, man, I'm going to, I'm going to save you for later in the game. Um, you know, hopefully with runners on, depending on the situation, um, you know, obviously we knew Hader was their, their high leverage guy and was probably going to, if they had a lead pitch multiple innings that night, um, and then matching me up against the lefty is ideal. So he, he kind of put me out there, pulled me back, put me out there, pulled me back. And then, um, you know, at that point, my job is just to kind of keep the line moving. You're not trying to do too much off of a guy like that. I mean, that guy's one of the nastiest pitchers in baseball. You're just trying to somehow get it to the next guy and put some more pressure on him. And I think, um, you know, we've talked about this run as well, how maybe in years past we haven't caught any breaks or the, the other team. And, and uh, you know, completely break my bat in half and it lands perfectly right in that Bermuda Triangle area in the middle of center field. And, um, you know, that kind of luck and that kind of, uh, I guess, baseball karma sort of followed us all the way through this run. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's unbelievable, man. So let's fast forward to the Dodgers series then. Game five, you face Bueller. And Bueller was lights out. You can talk about what it's like to, to face a guy like that. Was it a relief for the team when they go to a Hall of Famer in Clayton Kershaw, but it's not Bueller throwing that gas? Yeah, I mean, obviously Bueller's one of the best young pitchers in the game. This stuff is, um, you know, he's kind of similar to, to Garrett Cole, to be honest with you. Um, pretty well, hard slider, mixes curveball every now and then. Um, I don't know if you're ever excited to face Clayton Kershaw. I don't know if I'd go that far. Um <laughs> But, but uh, I mean, there's really nobody on that team. That team was was ridiculous. But, um, you know, like like we kind of said all along, it, it kind of felt like during this run and as it kept happening, like maybe it was just our time. And, you know, we uh, we kind of we kind of rode with that. And obviously, you know, it's not all luck. We played we played some great baseball. We got some some clutch hits and uh, obviously had a really good team. But um you know, you need some help along the way. And I think uh, just the comeback win, the way we grinded it out, um, you know, we had to do that basically since June. So it was it was normal for us. We didn't feel feel any pressure when that happened. It was almost kind of unfortunately the normal for this right. team since since we had to come back from that from that terrible start. I wanted to follow up on that because that was a big question I had. Bring us into the dugout there a little bit. You guys are so used to coming back. And we don't know what it's like to be in the dugout with you guys. All we see are the celebrations and the dances after you guys start your run or you catch a team or you pass them. But when you're down and it's the fifth, sixth, seventh inning of an elimination game and it, the tension is there, are you? is there chatter? Are, you, are guys going, hey, here we go, we're good, let's go, boys, let's go? Or is it just everyone just about their business? What, what is that dynamic like when you're down, the pressure's on, there's only six or seven outs left? And you still have to make this comeback. What kind of what's going on in the dugout in those situations? Right. Yeah, I think uh, it got to the point this year where we had such a veteran team and we'd done it so many times. It was almost just like not if it's going to happen, but when when is it going to happen? I think uh, you know when it's going to happen and who's going to do it. You know, tonight. Are you uh, talking? Like, not really. I mean, you're just continuing to. It bats out. I think that you know, there's been so much talk about that. Um, even if you're not getting hits, even if uh, you're not scoring runs, I think our lineup took took a lot of pride in working the pitcher. Uh, I think you saw that a lot in the World Series, you know, with Verlander and and Garrett Cole, at least in the first game. Um, you know, we had those guys out by the fifth or sixth inning, which wasn't happening all year for those guys. So our, I mean. Really, just trying to swing at strikes, even if you don't, even if you don't get hits or get on base. Really making the pitcher work, work to get you out. No easy outs, and we felt like 
you know, if we could do that and grind those at bats out at some point, we'd have an inning where it would pay off. And I think, uh, you know, there was no panic. I think it goes back to kind of how our season was. We felt like we were almost playing, playing with house money. I mean, people wrote us off, you know, everyone needed to be traded or fired. And then all of a sudden we started playing well. And then it was like, well, man, don't let us make the playoffs. If we make the playoffs with this team where we came from, nobody's going to want to play us. And then it was like, don't let us win the wild card game. Cause if we can somehow make it out of this wild card game, you know, I don't think any team, even the Dodgers are going to want to play us in a five game series with the pitching staff that we have. And then it was like, well, don't let us win game five. Cause then, you know, and it just kept, it kept snowballing. And then it was like, you know, we played the heck out of that series against the Cardinals. And then, and then we were like, man, well, we're here. Let's, uh, you know, who, who knows how we got here or why we're here, but we're here. Let's just keep going. Like we've been going and have some fun and, you know the pressure is all on the other team. We're not, we're not supposed to win this thing. I mean, you look at the, the odds and and what everyone's saying and how we have no chance. Like, uh, you know, let's let's shock the world. We're joined by World Series champion Ryan Zimmerman. How funny was the Eaton Kendrick dugout Sally the revving up the car bit that they were doing? And how awesome was it to see your your crosstown team that supported you guys so much through the run the Washington Capitals with Ovi spraying the champagne at their Halloween party when you guys ultimately clinched it and won? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Eaton, Kendrick, there's been much much made about all the celebrations. But, I, uh, you know, that's what kind of kept this team loose as well. Uh, I mean, you saw Steven, Steven Strasburg dancing in the dugout. You saw, uh, you know, <laughs> guys kind of, I guess, get out of their out of their normal selves a little bit. But, uh, obviously, I mean, Eaton and Kendrick were amazing all year long. You talk about Adam Eaton, one of the scrappiest players. I mean, a perfect number two hitter to go in between Trey and, and Rendon and just plays plays the game hard every single day. Um, you know, if you come to the field and you're you're not really willing to play hard that day, you watch him play for an inning and he puts pressure on you to, to match his intensity. So I can't say enough about him. Um, and then as far as the caps go, man, that was unbelievable. Um, I talked with, with Backy a bunch, and, uh, you know, they're on that West Coast trip the entire time pretty much that we're, we're kind of making this run. And, you know, their equipment guys putting their name tags up above their locker with the curly Ws and just kind of the, the crossover between organizations, how we, we supported their run, and it was so much fun for us to kind of just be a, a little part of that and, and just see how much excitement and joy they got and the city got um, and, and for us to do this and, and them to have our back and um, I I mean you give Ovi a chance to do anything to celebrate I think he did <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 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 for some reason I feel like at some point in these next couple of days he's just going to pop up somewhere where we are Oh yeah. yeah. And, and, <laughs> but uh, you know those guys are they're so much fun and uh, a bunch of us have become huge hockey fans and, uh, you know, we just root for each other and it, it's really cool. I think, um, you know, a lot of cities would like to have, you know, that sort of that camaraderie between teams and then we truly do root for them every night and we appreciate their support during the run. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Zim, this, this was one of the most remarkable postseasons, not just in baseball history, but in sports history because, you guys won all four games on the road, and that had never been done before, as you know, in any sport, in a best of seven. Yeah. Um, and you guys dominated them statistically in their ballpark, and they were 60 and 21 in that ballpark. You outscored them 30 to 10. They come here and outscore you guys 19 to 3. We couldn't figure it out. We were scratching our heads. We're like, what is going on? Well, here? I said it's, I mean, no offense to the other guys, their teammates are great, but on the road, you had Strauss and Scherzer on the mound. Well, hold on. Here's my question, though. Did you guys feel like, did you feel added pressure when you came here to Nats Park that you had to close it out and perform in front of the fans here? Like, what was the difference? Or is that just baseball? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just baseball. I think, uh, you know, at this point, honestly, like, I don't know about other sports, but home and road on baseball, to me, doesn't really mean anything. I think, uh, you know, I'm not getting nervous to play on the road. Right. You know, I've, we, we've all played in, in crazy scenes. So there's really no home, home and, you know, there's no advantage, I don't think. I think, uh, like you said, it's more just baseball. Um, and almost just, 
because of how wacky this season was, it's almost fitting that it happened that way mm-hmm. um, to win it by doing something that's never been done. Um, I think another stat someone told me was we had five elimination games that, and we trailed in all five of them. The only team to ever trail in all five elim- elimination games and come back and win every single one of them. Um, so it's almost, uh, it's almost, kind of just icing on the cake for probably the craziest season I've ever been a part of. And uh, I was talking to an older baseball guy who said one of his, uh, one of his first base coaches when they won the world series after they had failed a couple of times, he looked at him and he said, you know what, sometimes, you know, when it's your time, it's your time. And I honestly feel that's kind of how this run was. Like we didn't know how we were going to do it, but we knew we were going to do it. And every, every time some adversity kind of presented itself, we just grinded through and, and somehow, some way we won the game. Who knows how it happened, but, uh, but it happened, man. By the way, when you have time, look up Anthony Rendon's stats after the seventh inning and winner go home games. Absurd. But I wanted to ask yeah. you about fun because I watched, uh, by the way, we should thank you as a collect collectively as a show. Thank mm-hmm. all of the nationals because you kept us from talking about the Redskins, and we could focus on you guys. Very good. Um, up. But I watched. I loved it. I watched all the post game stuff, and you were doing um doing with uh, Frank Thomas and Big Poppy. I think Big Poppy, of course, gave you a cigar. Frank Thomas <laughs> gave you like the CBD. Yeah. Was, they were pipping their product. <laughs> but you did talk about having fun, and that Davey Martinez. You know, you've had all the managers here, and that Davey Martinez said to you that you're going to look back on your career and, and wish that you had more fun. Have you had more fun the last couple of years? Obviously, winning it all is fun, but what was different with Davey the last couple of seasons? Yeah, I mean, like you said, winning winning makes everything fun. Um, but basically his message was, I mean, Davey played forever in the big leagues as well, and I think, and it's just natural. You sort of get caught up in the grind, in the performance-driven what have you done for me lately? Um, Professional sports kind of cyclone, I guess. And that's, that's probably true for, for every, every athlete that plays every professional sport. I mean, there's so much pressure on you to perform that I think you can get into the day to day grind where you show up and all you do is focus on what do I need to do today to succeed? What do I need, you know, this and that. And there's obviously a place for that. But basically what Davey said is, You know, I've talked to so many guys, and he's like kind of myself included, where four or five years after you're done playing, you're watching a game, or, you know, you go to the field, and you're like, man, playing in the big leagues was fun, Mm. you know? Uh, Four or five years afterwards, you're in the real world. You're not, you know, you're not doing stupid things that you're allowed to get away with when you're a professional athlete, whether it's in the clubhouse, on the field. Um, So you kind of get caught up too much in – you know, I have to perform, I have to do this. And, you know, basically kind of what he was saying is there can be a happy medium. You can come to the park every day. You can work your butt off. You can prepare yourself to to succeed that night and to win a game. But at the same time, you should enjoy being in the big leagues because it's a heck of an accomplishment to get there. And he's like, you know, when you're done, you're going to look back and say, I wish I would have enjoyed it more. I wish I would have enjoyed this whatever it is, 5, 10, 15 year period of my life, because honestly, it's going to be one of the best times, if not, if not the best time in your life. 